Good morning to you all. Thank you yet again for dialing in. Today, uh, we talk about being innovative in a commodity industry. A commodity in economical terms is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other goods of the same type. Let me put this in terms of service. A commodity service in economical terms is a basic service like plumbing used in buying and selling that is interchangeable with other services like plumbing services next door. Now, I don't know if this is good news or bad news for you. For me, it means opportunity. So let's kick this off with a story. In 1933, Samuel Blank designed and created a funny looking sewer cleaning machine using a washing machine motor, roller skate wheels, and a cable to turn the blades. All of this because he was fed up with a clock drain in his son's apartment. He used this machine to cut tree roots out of the sewer lines. No digging was required. A year later, it was his very clever wife who named it the Roto Rooter, a well-known name today in the plumbing industry. In 1946, another invention for Roto Rooter company came about. That was developed for municipal pipes. Now it all started off as a business in the USA. In 1976, Roto Rooter came to South Africa and since then, the SA team have developed their services to include CCTV equipment that can inspect your drain and a few other tricks. Roto Rooter is operating in various countries, Indonesia, the Philippines, Canada, to name a few. Samuel Blank had a problem and he figured that if he's got that problem, someone else probably also have that problem. So he thought of a solution. That solution ended up as a great invention that is still used today, but just with upgraded tools and technology, I hope. Now, why exactly is this important to come up with great ideas? Why can we not just follow the market and hop on for the ride? Well, I suppose if Thomas Edison thought that we have the candle and, it, and it's working great, so let's just keep to the status quo and we light a candle every night, we never would have had the light bulb. Or if Alexander Bell didn't think it was necessary to make the distance between two people shorter by connecting them with a wire that would convey sound, we never would have had the telephone. You have two ways of running your business. You can either just wait for the next call out and hope there's enough of those in a month to pay the bills or you can go out and find the next call out or potential sale. You can think of solutions to problems that no one else have thought of. You can do something great for your business and for mankind and find the next great invention that changes the world of plumbing. Maybe you've thought of something already. Your clients would want you to solve their pressing plumbing issues. In this commodity industry, you have a fantastic opportunity to stand out from the crowd. Your next door rival will not know what hit him when you come up with a solution and you are getting all the clients. So let's define what is an invention. According to the business dictionary, product innovation is defined as the development and market introduction of a new redesigned or substantially improved good or service. It might be that you have an idea with something that's already on the market, but you can make that product or service even greater. That classifies as an innovation. Now, there are four segments to an innovative product or service, and your idea will fit into any of these. So let's look at it. At the bottom left, you get the variant that has the least impact on the market and the least on technology newness. It is the incremental variant 
And here the innovation is gradual, continuous improvements on existing products and services. One up on the left is a variant that is not necessarily much of a newness on technology, but it has a high impact on the market. <clears throat> this variant is sustaining which means there is a significant improvement on a product or service that aims to sustain the market position of the product or service. A good example is Samsung cell phones or upgraded models of cars. A new type of phone or a brand new model of cars will fall in the disruptive variant. The technology and the impact on the market is high due to the newness of the model and the disruptive impact on the existing market. Everyone with a phone now wants the latest and greatest iPhone or Samsung on the market, or the latest Nissan 4x4 double cab makes the boys jump up and down. It disrupts the current market and shows the highest impact on the market because the products are not in essence new to the market. It's just highly upgraded and technologically advanced. In the last variant, the radical, here the technological breakthrough transforms the industry. And in a lot of cases, it creates a new market. An example is that of Tesla's electric cars back when they launched in 2008. Radical innovation disrupt the status quo. There are very little innovations that fall in this category. They reckon only about 10% of all innovations is radical. Cloud computing was a radical invention. The light bulb was a radical invention. You get the picture. Okay, so we're talking about being innovative in the industry that you are in. How can you be creative with plumbing products and services? In terms of sustaining and incremental innovation, there are various ways that you can outperform your rival. You just need to think about this a little and do a bit of observation. You can predict the needs of your clients by looking at trends and anticipating opportunities. What do I mean? When you become mindful of patterns in the behavior of your clients, you can, when you step back a little, see a trend that might give you an idea of what can potentially go wrong or right in the near future. This concept hooks onto our discussion in June on lead measures. Just to refresh your mind, lead measures are developed from looking at what you can do to action, prevent, or determine the outcome you wish to have. Back then, I used the example of your car breaking down next to the road. If you take it for regular services, put fuel, check the oil regularly, the chances of you getting stuck next to the road dramatically reduces. So now, when you observe your client's behavior, you might be able to implement a lead measure that could excel your services far and beyond the plumber next door. Now, Greg Moser from Power Objects said, it is critical for businesses to continue down a path of service innovation in order to stay competitive. So let's talk again about your field staff, your employees that are facing the client daily. In our previous discussion, we said that you need to make sure that your team interact at all times according to your company values, because whatever they say or do communicates what your business stands for, and it has a direct relation to how your clients perceive you and your business. So let's be positive about this and say that your field staff is well-trained and their interaction with your clients are in a good state. They might get a chance to upsell or cross-sell, or they can help in renewing service contracts and warranties. Having your team out and interacting with clients can ensure customer loyalty and satisfaction if they are trained well. Now, all you need to add to that mix is the correct and latest information at their fingertips so they can provide a high performance customer service. Now, if it's only you working in your business, 
then you can determine the amount of information you gather and read up on and the level of service you want to deliver. But the very moment you employ one more person, the ball game changes. And if you plan on growing your business, which I believe you do, otherwise you would not have dialed in today, chances are that at some point in time, you will be appointing staff. So let's look at a process that you can potentially follow in order to develop a new product or service. Like any new development, there is some research to do. You need to understand what problem you want to address. Figure out what your own business capabilities are, whether it is a problem that you can actually address and then define what are the requirements for you to successfully make that problem go away for your clients. That is the basics of stage one of the process. The next stage in the process is to look outside of your business to determine what are your competitors or rivals doing. Are they busy assessing the situation and addressing the problem? Or will you be the first? You also want to know the size of the market that you will be servicing when you address this problem. How many of your current clients sits with this problem? Or will it be a new market that you will be tapping into? Then you want to position yourself in that market. Now, what does that mean? On the play field, the players are appointed in certain positions. In rugby, you get the scrum off, fly off, forwards, fullback, etc. Same goes for market positions. We call those positions market leaders, challengers, followers, and market niches. You need to decide where you are going to play. One of Business Doctor's products is what we call the Growth Accelerator. If you choose to be a market leader, this program is the one for you. It positions your business to play to win instead of just playing not to lose. Back to the product development process. Stage two requires of you to determine where you want to position your business. And then the last thing to consider is the legal and compliance issues you might face in order to successfully address the client problem. Stage three is looking at what resources you might need to get your problem solving plan going. You need to look at cost versus the benefits to the client. Then you need to determine the price of your offering. Also, consider the potential risks involved. Now, what do I mean with risk? Risk could involve the things that might go wrong when implementing your new product or service offering, but also what could potentially go wrong if you don't do it? You know the saying, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Well, it's pretty much looking at both ends and weighing it up to help you decide if it is a good idea to carry on or not. This process of weighing up risk helps you to build your business case. A business case is the justification that you can come up with to make resources available, money, people, tools, machinery, to implement a new project, or in our case, a new innovative product or service. Now, why on earth would it be necessary to go through all this trouble to get to a business case? It is most very easy. You see the customer is struggling with something. You remember seeing a new gadget that can fix it for her. You tell her, she buys it, you put it in, finish and clock. No, it all depends on where you are taking your business. Remember now, if you want to see a different result in your business, you need to change the way you do things. Everything up to stage three is part of research and planning. You are putting yourself in the position where you can make an informed decision on how and where to take your next move in this game of the industry you play and work in. Stage four is where the fun starts. Now you're at the point where you need to develop on your problem solving solution. Whether it be a groundbreaking product you are bringing to the market or a new clever way of doing things for your client. Now, is the time to test it. 
If you're looking into bringing a product from overseas into the market here, you might want to consider running it like a project. In fact, the definition of a project is a series of tasks that is outside of the normal day-to-day -day processes that need to be completed in order to reach a specific outcome. You should run it like a project. If it freaks you out a little, start with a tick list of what is needed and what needs to be done. It is always a good idea to run a tick list. Now test your product or service on a few clients, please. Make it friends and family. You don't want to scare off a great client with a system or process that is still in a testing phase. Map out the product or service roadmap. From the time you purchase it or manufacture it, right to the point when it is installed at the client's premises and ready to use. If you're implementing a new service, the process might be from the first contact with a potential client, and then you work off the base that the client wants the service, map out the process to the point where the service is fully delivered and the job card is closed off. Now, mapping your process will help a great deal in the development of your product or service. You will easily identify potential time constraints or issues or risks that you will have to find solutions for or work around. Now, here's a side note. You know, when you walk into a room or walk through a room, there's a natural path to take, but someone has put a table or chair in the way and every time you walk past there, you bump your toe. It's because of the natural path that your brain tells you to take. Humans and animals tend to find the shortest distance between two points. Consider this when you start mapping out your process flow or your product or service delivery process. Look for the natural path and try to avoid unnecessary turns and stops. Stage five is where you launch your product or service in the market. Part of this launch is the marketing and sales planning and the activities. How will you communicate this to the market? And what is the sales process? How do you incorporate it into your current offerings? You also need to get a training program running for your salespeople or the technicians who will be doing the implementation of the new product or service and who's dealing with the clients. Think about the distribution channels. Where is the product coming from? How long does it take to get here? Do we need to make any alterations or assembly of parts before it is ready for the client? The idea is not to start planning these things here but rather to get the timing of it 100% correct. When you are moving into a new house and you have small animals and kids, you want to make sure that the gate of the new place is working properly, right? Mom's rule is no flat kid or animal. So before you take the kids and the dogs to the new house, you check the hinges of the gates and the locks and you check the fence and then you make sure there's no dangerous objects lying around that could potentially hurt the kids or the animals, right? Now, same goes here for stage five. You want to make sure everything is in place. Timing of things are set. Your supplier is on board and ready. You know what you are telling your market, what you are launching. You make sure your team is trained and ready for action. And now you set the launch date and you stick to that date like your life depends on it. Now, I will leave you with the clever words of Thomas Edison, the guy who invented the light bulb. He said, there is a way to do it better. Find it. Thank you, everybody.